this is a reversal of anesthesia. So this is a very interesting case study that was done by my senior. So when I was in the second year in Bad College, one of my seniors, they were doing it. So um, as you may know, we go to, we go to uh, as part of our course, we go to farms to do lamy. Um, and uh, one of the one of the conditions, one of the challenges we face with lambing is that sometimes the lambs they are born uh, still, they don't do too much, and you have the usual rubbing, 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 trying to get all the mucus off on the nose and tap, 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 and you know CPR, all that sort of thing, trying to revive the lambs again. And uh, so my senior, what she did was that so she was learning culture as well, which was interesting in that. So she was having this uh, bargain, bargain with a farmer to say that look, listen, I, I, I've got a final year project. Uh, can I use my experience with you lambing as part of my project? And basically, it was very simple. When a lamb comes out that is not um, not revivable, so to speak, after you've done everything, pass them over to me, and I'll see what I can do. So, similar two groups, okay, and you know. Farmers, being farmers, they're very, very experienced people, they know animals, they know their lambs much, much more than what we would ever know. And um, so they usually have a very good knack to say that, oh, this one's gone, I'm going to try everything. I tried my seven systems that my granddad taught me, uh, and it's not working, and that's it. So those were the, so those were the lambs that, said, that my, my senior was passing to me. And what she did was she just did one acupuncture point. So using a hypodermic needle, there's a you can see over here, it's just a little orange, a 23 gauge needle. And uh, we, he, uh, she went into the GB26, governing vessel 26, or called the Rinzong, uh, Rinzong Tau, right in the middle over here, just below the nose. Okay, and that is what we call emergency point. It is a very, 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 very painful point, And it stimulates breathing, like just to take a breath. If you're ever hit over here, it is not a good point to get hit. And um, so, all she did was stick the needle inside there and just twist it a little bit. And by doing that, she could revive 80% of the lambs that were condemned to be dead. And so I was like, okay, very good, cool. So I personally used this point with, in my experience, it's more so 60% um, in, in, in cases, not, not in lambs, but you know, in dogs and cats that have stopped breathing, we've done a CPR and nothing is happening, and before we sort of pronounce the date, so, so to speak, I said, let's try this first. And it's just incredible to watch when there's no heartbeat, no breathing, for maybe like two or three minutes, and I get caught in it, just stick a needle inside them, and the dog goes, ah! and I'm like, whoa, okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's like a bunch of my stuff. Please only use it in emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, I say again, it's very, very painful. It's a very uncomfortable point to use for emergencies only. So, yeah. But it's between that and that. So. <laughs> yeah. hey, um, I'd like to share a case study with you. So this is the Singapore Turf Club, Singapore Race Club. Um, it is a very, in my mind, it's still a very controversial idea for, or, or the whole concept of it, but nonetheless, um, I'm amazed by it as well. So, in UK, when you talk about horse racing, uh, example, there is Newton Albert Racing Club, and there's Exeter Race Club. Uh, each, or on race day, um, <coughs> horse owners would bring their horses to the club and a specific races and you race. In Singapore, it's a tiny island. Singapore, for you may, you may or may not know, is smaller than Dartmoor. That is how small Singapore is. And the population is 5.5 million. Okay. So we haven't got fields for horses. So it's not as though every horse only can have a field and bring... There's no such thing. So for Singapore, the turf club, all the thoroughbreds, they live one side. And I mean, the facilities that they have is two stories high, you know, all air, all air conditioned. It's that's the where the conflict lies. They're like, okay, so the whole life is on the race club. So there's like sixteen hundred of them on the race club, and you know, it's Singapore is a hot country, so we can only race at night because in the daytime it just you knows bleed everything. So they only train in the morning and they race at night. So nonetheless, when I went there to go and see a practice, because when I went to Singapore holiday and it's, it's the best thing to do is to tie together a holiday and, and getting some work done. So I was there at the race club and. This is a fairly modern race club. I mean, it's like air-conditioned facilities and 
the state of the art operating theater, the vets from Australia, uh, from sort of um, America. So it's I thought of big money, big 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 money. I, I cannot comprehend how big the money is, but it's big money. Um, when they're telling me numbers, I'm like I just don't understand. <laughs> and they use acupuncture like nobody's business. And that was an interesting thing. I'm like, okay, with all your modern facilities, you should come with acupuncture. So the one which I saw and physically saw when I was there was that this horse <coughs> came in on a Monday morning, typical tying up, uh, tying up um, syndrome. It was over the weekend, they were like size, and on Monday it was just a bit lame. So it came in, you know, seven tens, hopping lame, pretty much on the left hind leg, and just hopping into the stock. And after this, I was just over there watching, and uh, the Australian vet she was uh, explaining to me. He was when I was a vet student. He said, "Excuse me, so we're going to act function now." And she was explaining to me, "I don't know whether you know what the energies is in, but I know a little bit because I'm Chinese." Uh, and she said that, "Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to stick the acupuncture point, the first point, up on the rump. Then I'll just slowly trace down to the middle of the thigh or the quads, then onto the stifle, and lastly at the foot, just above the hoof. And that's where we release." all the pent up energy. So she was just sticking one needle, two needle, three needle, and when she stuck the last one, the whole muscle just collapsed. Because it is a horse, it's a huge piece of muscle. So you can see when it dropped like five centimeters, I'm like, whoa, what was that? that basically as the energy had just gone up. And the needles just stuck in there for like 15 minutes, uh, you know, 15 minutes, took out the needles, and the horse woke up sound. I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something to it. <laughs> so that was uh, sort of my, my personal experience when I saw that. Then after that, I learned that they also use it to treat uh, things like colic, where usually it is a uh, pain induced by uh, you know stomach issues, so to speak, gut issues, which uh, uh, horses they can suffer from uh, due to a lot of different reasons. And they use a good point um, uh, number thirteen, which is a uh, sanjia, which means uh, three screens, and used bilaterally. So you can see. That's on this side, this side. Okay. So it's indicated for enterospasm, gastric uh, distension, and indigestion. And that's where, so it's, uh, you can see like four horses in the stocks, like puncture, like puncture, like different needles. In. And, and those are, I mean, those are not even like needles, those are just hypodermic needles. Those are needles that we use, use for injection. So it really doesn't matter, just as you stick something inside there. And those like puncture points, and um, they just walk on fine. So it's used very much in common place, which is uh, very, very interesting. So that's uh, other points as well. So the Bai Hui, which means 100 meetings. Um, that is the very common acupuncture point that is used for back pain because that is where all the nerves meet up. So if there is a hip dysplasia or stifle issues or hock issues or arthritis, that is a very common point that we use quite uh, often as well. Then after that, you have all the different points over here. Zhu Yu, Da Zhang Yu, and Bai Hui over here. And just below the table, you have all the sort of things. And this is acupuncture. They do a lot of acupuncture there as well. Because as you can imagine, um, the horses are big. The acupuncture points, in relative to dogs and pets, are much bigger. So if we stick a needle inside that, it may not be as effective as uh, sticking to a dog and pet with much smaller muscle. So it uses acupuncture. And uh, what they inject is syrupin over there, which is a very interesting solution. Sarapin is basically an extract from a pitcher plant. You know a pitcher plant? Yep. So it's an extract from the liquid from pitcher plant. It has got anesthetic uh, qualities, which is how the pitcher plant works. The inside falls inside, and the sarapin sort of uh, poisons it so that it uh, makes it fall asleep. Then, um, so they inject that inside there as well. The interesting thing, the reason why I say interesting, these are things that they inject in. So they inject either sarapin, and as you can see, it is a product just for aquapuncture. Uh, or they also inject a sort of a B12 vitamin. Uh, they did a study to compare what's the best thing to inject, which is the, which is the best that has got the um, best outcome, so to speak. So, if let's remind ourselves, we're talking about non steroidal anti inflammatories, steroids, saline, serapin, uh, vitamin B12. And what they found was actually the saline is the one with the best effect, and the worst effect is the local anesthetic. Because the whole idea behind it is because uh, saline can be quite irritating. So if you irritate the acupuncture point, you're actually stimulating the acupuncture point more. You see, I mean, compared to anesthetizing, numbing it, it doesn't really work as much. 
So these are just some little examples of animals re uh, receiving acupuncture. And uh, the question that is usually <coughs> asked is, uh, do we have to sedate them? Do we have to anesthetize them? Uh, I'll say no, okay, because that defeats the entire purpose. Uh, then you've got to have sedative risks and sedative risks and all sorts of things. Uh, so usually what we talk about acupuncture is that there is, uh, we use an 80-10-10 rule. So 80% of animals would pretty much um, react in the predictable fashion whereby you will achieve some form of pain relief uh, but after a little while it hits the plateau. 10% of animals are what we call hypersensitive animals whereby they just actually cannot stand the needle, the whole, they get so stressed that it's a bit pointless to try to stick needles in them because it just defeats the whole purpose of the treatment in the first place. And 10% are what we call non-responders. Non-responders are uh, animals that do not respond to acupuncture, usually we say that they're non-responders when we have done four to six sessions and there's absolutely no difference whatsoever. Um, and that is how I sort of, uh, that is how I sort of advise uh, pet owners. And how I usually gauge it, or how I usually explain that is that it's just like a drug. How some people they react better to ibuprofen and some people they react better to paracetamol. There's nothing wrong with the drug itself. So it just depends on whether it's suitable for that particular patient or not. And uh, it's, it's the same for acupuncture. It doesn't suit everybody. <coughs> but um, for those that suit, you know, you do get that sort of effect. That's quite, uh, that, that's quite um, predictable. So usually the course would be, the initial course would be four weeks and uh, once every week. Usually, usually by the third session, we sort of know whether it's going to be a responding well or not. So we don't have to wait till six. Yeah, and, and after the first four weeks, then after that we will break for about a month. Then if it's still fairly okay, i.e. the animal is still doing what it's supposed to do and it's not limping, it's not painful, it appears to be very happy, then we'll push it even longer, five weeks, six weeks, sometimes even two months. So uh, for a top-up session, so to speak. And what we find is usually the sort of sweet spot is every six weeks. Um, and uh, in the definition of improvement, uh, we have to manage expectations because we have to know the difference between okay, if your dog is lame because uh, of anatomy issues like hip dysplasia, the lameness may be permanent. <coughs> acupuncture is not going to solve that. But the question is, is acupuncture providing pain relief? So when some owners they say that my dog is still limping but is happier, he wants to play more, he's sleeping less, he's still hopping around, but he wants. So I would say that that is probably a positive. Um, outcome of the acupuncture as well because the, the dog not being uh, sound, it's not really a pain problem, it's more of an anatomy problem, it's just like someone with one, one long leg and one short leg, you'll always be um, sort of uh, limping a little bit, but the question is are you in pain? So we always look at the sort of happiness level of the dog to see whether you're in pain. So that, that is just to, to, to uh, let you guys understand the expectations. Really. So in summary, you know, the concepts are essentially different from Western medicine treating the same diseases. And, um, and what we must really know is that in China, acupuncture is the standard. That is normal conventional medicine. The alternative medicine is when you start giving drugs. <laughs> so, you know, that's... And people in China, there are also people with the same anatomy <laughs> and their conditions and diseases are treated with acupuncture and you know herbs and things like that. And a dog in China would have the same anatomy as a dog in UK. So when their conventional medicine is acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine with herbs and body and lifestyle, um, and their alternative is, oh, it's not working, let's go and try some drugs. Rather than in the over here is, let's try the drugs, it's not working, let's go and try acupuncture. So it is a very interesting conceptual difference. And that is what fascinates me the most. It's all the same body. How can there be so many different ways of treating it? Rephrase. How can there not be so many different ways of treating it? And uh, it's a primary form of uh, treatment in China for thousands of years. Is that they use a very holistic approach, and it's shown to be effective in many uh, in many patients in many conditions. And uh, certainly, this expertise to be effective. Uh, so there is what we call sham sham acupuncture points as well, whereby. Uh, the idea is that, okay, you're sticking needles into so-called random places. If I stick needles in the random places, will it get the same effect anyway? And uh, the reality is, no, uh, sticking sham acupuncture doesn't produce an outcome of proper acupuncture uh, as it works. So, 
I just want to live with the absence of proof. It's not cool. Um. <laughs>